Spring starts in 21 hours. You shit better melt. <laughs> it's getting old. Anyway. So. At least it's a good time to hibernate in the garage. And that's what I've been doing the last couple days. Um, been giving it pretty good. I've been out here till 10, 11. I think one night I came in 11.30 at night. Just kind of knocking out all the stuff on the bus. And... Just, uh, we did that one ride um, to the diner, and uh, I've been taking it every day to the diner too, and uh, of course that starts creating a big punch list of stuff to do, and the big, two of the biggest things was the, um, the play in the steering being really sloppy, and the uh, shifter not shifting right, so I kind of tackled both of those. Most of the front end problems, turn the light on there, was, um, due to the Pitman arm bushings having a lot of play in them. I gotta sit on the lift, but you can see right there. That's where the Pitman arm is. Right there. And that's got two brass bushings in it. And it's got a big arm that sticks out the back for the tie rods. Kinda see that. So that's fairly long, probably about 10, 12 inches long. So any little play that you have up front here uh, manifests itself to a lot out back, and that's where a lot of this uh, play was coming from. And it had some rust on the bottom, so you can kind of see that I welded a, cut out a plate and uh, welded that plate on around it while I had it all apart, and then just repacked it all with grease. So, doing that, hold on a second, let me get up. Um, basically there's two brass bushings in there and here's the ones that came out of it these two guys right here and uh, of course they don't look bad by eye but uh, they had too much play in them so that gave me an excuse to try and uh, play with the lathe and make up some uh, new bushings which I did so um, I went back to the father-in-law's uh, two weeks or so ago and I grabbed a bunch of the metal stock and one of them was this long rod of brass that you see here so I cut off about a four inch piece of that and I stuck it in the lathe and just got some good time on the lathe to try to figure out how stuff works so I went and I drilled a um, like a half inch pilot hole all the way through the whole piece of material and after doing that it, it kind of allowed me to support the uh, four inches of it and then I just took a cutting tool and cut the outside down to diameter and then uh, I had a problem trying to figure out how to make the hole on the inside large enough and the largest drill bit that I had that would fit was a half inch and this thing came with these long bits you can see down here and one of them was the correct size but by the time you figure out what to jig the thing up in you just run out of space there isn't enough room to kind of go and use that so I'm kind of out of that's probably why all these are all new. They probably uh, just weren't able to be fit in this setup. But what I did have, I think I put it away already, um, I had an end mill. So I stuck an end mill in one of the uh, the regular chucks and I ran the end mill uh, and probably opened it up to about three quarters of an inch or so. And somewhere in here is the uh, the boring tool, the boring head, I put that on there and uh, cut out the center of it. And uh, that actually kind of worked quite well. I'm not going to be able to find it. So I got them dead nuts and I got the thing so super, there's, there's absolutely no play in it whatsoever. But I probably was on this for about two hours or so, just whittling away and, and just trying to get an education how to use the lathe, you know, high speed and low speed according to what you were cutting. Big ass pile of brass underneath there. And uh, again, it's just, it was good just to get some time on it. I probably could have bought the bushings for 10 bucks, but uh, uh, I didn't have to wait for them. I was able to take it apart, get it all right back together on the same day. So that worked out well, and then we went and uh, the shifters are adjustable. There's a plate on the floor right under here with two bolts on it, and you can kind of shift it around left, right, forward, and back, and get yourself in a better window of where the uh, where the shift pattern is. So I got it now. It's butter. You get second gear, no problem. All the gears, no problem. Unfortunately, the one problem I do have is you have to hold it in first gear. It'll pop out of first gear. You don't have to hold it in 
hard. It's not like it's forcing it out of your hand, but if you don't apply any little forward pressure on it, it will pop out. So it's not like me to have a, uh, a vehicle that uh, I think the last three vehicles I got all had to do transmission work. So why should this one be any different, right? So at some point, if I have uh, some major work to do, I'll pop that out and uh, we'll dig into that transmission and uh, see if VW Darren do enough of them that I feel I can probably uh, take care of it myself too. Uh, put some padding on the bench. Uh, the bench is actually is works very well. It's very comfortable. Um, only problem that I have is when I like I that cushion that's sitting on there, and I plan on putting cushions on the seat. Is that I'm so tall that um, it makes it hard to see traffic lights. So I got to drop the seat down probably about an inch, maybe a little bit more. And all I have to do is just slice this, put one in front or behind the other, let it slide back down, and re-weld it back together again. And, uh, and just knock down my springs a little bit more in the back. So that's those guys. And what else did I chase? Um, directionals, they did a bunch of work on uh, getting the lights working. As you can tell on the last ride, you know, it was clicking real fast in one direction, it had a bulb out. And uh, the other side was kind of iffy also. So I tore this guy apart on the insides and basically just cleaned the contacts up and uh, all that came back together. Uh, my gas gauge is, uh, the sending unit's not working in the tank, so when I do that transmission, I'll also do that sending unit in the tank. Washer bottle's no good. I gotta get a washer bottle for it. Then, I, uh, most of the time I've been spending on getting the panels on the inside, and I'll show you them. I had um, the burlap and that um, roll of vinyl. You can see all the burlap I brought it in. So I took the two door panels off, the side doors, and I, was, I laid the burlap on them, see how I liked them. I brought the vinyl in, so I like that. And unfortunately, the, the burlap just kind of, um, it's very hard to get it so that it, it stays perfectly straight. It kind of wants to like wander. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. Kind of show. If you look at it, when you're trying to lay it on a pa panel, you see how it like it, it can move however it wants to move it. And working with the glue, you got one shot to set it down. If you don't get a dead nut, it's gonna stay however it stays. And I, I was just kind of going back and forth about the look at it. Once I laid them on the panels, it, the artwork wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, so to speak. So. I decided that I am going to just take the vinyl and uh, do all the panels in the vinyl. So that's what I was been. That's what I've been doing. Let me close this door and open this one, so you can kind of see what we're going for. And uh, been cutting them out uh, while they've been apart. I've been using the, what I had for Dynamat on the inside of the doors. So these doors actually they have a more feel of weight to them and they're not that tinny sound when you shut them like when you heard that front door shut now when you close these doors they're just a good old thump the windows vibrating a little but you get the idea they have that um that solid feel to them now so that one that one's done uh we got all those done going all the way around that one's done that one's done, and all those have the uh, Dynamat behind them. The next one I have to do is probably that back one there, and the one long panel behind there. I ran out of Dynamat. I think there's one piece left somewhere, one sheet left somewhere. Maybe I did use it all up. Oh, no, nope. there you go. Here's what's left of it. And it's kind of like, um, I don't know, about an eighth inch worth of like a, like a tar material. And it's got the self stick backing. You peel this stuff off and it helps with road noise. And um, well, pretty much no <laughs> road noise. It keeps it just a, you know, just a quieter shell kind of uh, helps insulate and uh, keep the uh, uh, road noise out. So you can kind of see how kind of sticky that is and it's got an aluminum on the back of it. Uh, this stuff is kind of pricey. So what I am going to try 
is this is the stuff that you put on your roof because I want to do more of it too I still want to do the um, probably the floors before I put the wood flooring down and I got that one big panel to go so if you were to look at this stuff it's really not all that much different you pull the backing off you got that same kind of sticky stickiness to it and then on the other side it's black it doesn't have the foil on it but it's not sticky you know you got the clear plastic on it so that's what I'm gonna go with and there's a ton of that on there and I do have a roof to do in the spring so whatever's not used on there will go to the uh, uh, to the roof so these panels came out quite nice and of course you're not gonna see any of them but uh, the texture is really good. They feel really nice. The glue uh, worked out really well spraying the glue on them. Uh, the only thing I did was on like like this one and this one, I kind of took sandpaper to the end of them, just kind of shrunk them up a little bit because they weren't wrapped from the factory. And then uh, because I wrapped them, it kind of made them just a little bit longer. So they're all in place. It's kind of like, you know, working with a... Uh, Try to say how, how I'm going to say this right. One thing has to be in place before the next thing can be. So what I decided to do is I pulled the interior back out of it and I just started making all the panels. I figured I'll just upholster all these panels, even if they all get covered. At least they're all done and all the shell is kind of uh, consistent all the way around. So that's where I am. After that, those cabinets can go back in, but I have to figure out what I'm gonna do for curtains first, because these two windows will have a cabinet over the front of them and you can't really access them very well. So I need to try to come up with whatever I'm gonna do, put that curtain in there and then put that cabinet in. So I'm kinda of undecided what I wanna do. I may use the burlap for the curtains. Um, there's an old camper out back, old motorhome. It's got a bunch of like white curtains in them and they're, they're kind of shitty. So I thought possibly what I might do is um, I might tie dye them in the same kind of color too or I may just go solid, I'm not sure. Building 19, it's, uh, that's our cheapy store around here that's all leftover stuff. Uh, so two bucks for that, if I use it or not, so be it. Uh, I'll dye that fabric and uh, put the curtains up. I may make something out of something else. I may try like a red and white checkerboard uh, I don't know. So I figured I'd do the panels first and once I get the panels in place I'll f see what kind of looks good on the interior. If you look at the color of these they kind of match pretty good too with the, uh, the inside and the outside. The color of the bus and the color of the panel are, are pretty damn close just the uh, sheen is different. You know that being more of a satin and that being a gloss. So I like it. Still waiting on my screws for the uh, the doors to finish up the door panels. I made myself a little cheat sheet over here just to see what else I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so we got the steering bushings, the shifters done, uh, the lights, the directionals, I did the dynamat and the panels. I uh, did uh, my heater pipes underneath too, so I hooked up the heater boxes to the controls of the heat. And what you want to call for heat, you can kind of <laughs> <laughs> While you're going down the road, you can stick your hands in front of the vent and you can feel like a light breeze of warm air coming up, but that's about it. So. It's getting there. Uh, I figure I'd just kind of keep picking away and uh, do a couple of late nighters and uh, get it to uh, where it needs to go. Uh, it cost uh, a whopping $17 in the state of New Hampshire to uh, register an antique vehicle. I know, right? What a ripoff. And uh, any vehicle over 40 years old, as long as it's got antique plates on it, you get an inspection sticker for two years. So I went, and they are due in April. So I went to my local inspection place that I go to and I reminded them to, to pick up some stickers for two years and not one. So they're gonna go do that and I'll have it by next week and I could run it through inspection. And I think that's all I got really to talk about right now. Uh, trying, trying to get it, you know, how many years uh, you think you're going to get close to running it for the year and this one was just a determination to make sure I got this thing on the road and, and have a bus to drive for this year, so. I got the tethers on the door. Um, on a regular bus, this is a deluxe bus or a Samba, whatever you want to call it, they have a big fat, like a two inch wide piece of chrome that goes all the way around, that's what you see all these little holes are for. And then on a regular bus that didn't have the chrome to it, what they would do is they would put a little rubber snubber right here. And what that would allow you to do is the door can fold all the way back on itself. 
I'll show you in the front. The door can close all the way back on itself. Um, on the deluxe, if you do that, the chrome the chrome will hit on itself. So what they do is they have these tethers that stop the door from opening all the way and then you have a pin that you can pull to stop it. So if you look at this door, you can kind of see how it will stop at that point right there. Not a lot of the door to go all the way. So I got them installed too. You can hear how more solid that door is now. So they're getting there. They're looking pretty good. It makes the rest of the bus look like shit now in the interior of the headliner. But I got some ideas for that too. And it's dark in here, you can't see nothing. But. So, today I want to try knocking out those those panels, put the uh, the insulation in behind it, and uh, work on the front seat. Start getting that front seat kind of uh, locked into what it's going to be fun. Can, yeah. <laughs> okay, somebody smack me, will you? Um, get the front seat finalized, get it lowered a little bit, probably take it all apart, start doing all the sanding on the components, paint out uh, this material right here. I haven't decided what color I want to do yet. And, uh, you know, make the tether for the back so it doesn't go up all the way. Other than that, I like it. It's very comfortable to drive and you'd be surprised. Oh, yeah, and I got the two front kick panels on the bottom still to do yet. But I'm good with that. All right, guys. Again, thanks for watching. And uh, just doing a little bit more show and tell on uh, where we're going with it. And uh, I'll see you all later. Take care.